My salam tana, tana is telling. This is a this is a follow up to the sabbatical studies and the teachings and and the and the readings and feedings as we're in the book of Deuteronomy now. And in the book of Deuteronomy, we're coming to a completion of a cycle, a particular cycle. We're coming to a completion of the cycle in Deuteronomy in our the the lunar solar year, as well as going through the the five books of Moses or the basic the basic instruction. Moses and the teaching of Moses are certain basic instruction. As we mentioned before, we give thanks because we have been able to um publish this right here, publish the um preliminary notes on the Hylas Elisha the First Bible and in this preliminary notes we have been able to um introduce what it is that we've been teaching concerning the seven seals and the book of the seven seals. But it's a detailed lesson, like with this particular um, update, to what we've been attempting to teach. In other words, with the whole Ethiopic war, let's get right into it. But we want to suggest this book not because it is um, our book in particular, but because it addresses it addresses certain... Um, important re relevatory and rastify relevatory matters that have not been previously addressed elsewhere by others. But it is really, as Christ says, he who seeks to do, you understand, the will of my Father, our Father, who art in heaven, will know of who the teaching is. And so you'll find such, let's see if we can show this, such charts as this, concerning the seven seals of the scriptures because there are seven types of books in the scriptures. So you'll find that the number seven, as many of you all probably already know, the number seven is, uh, some say it's a heavenly number, spiritual number. But if you study it from a scriptural point of view, a biblical point of view, you find that as we have the seven seals, as we have the seven, the seven spirits of the Lord, of Adonai, Yahweh, as we have... Um, you know the seven, you know the seven um, chakras in man. As we have the positive level, in other words, of the seven heavens, even you understand, or the seven orders of the Ethiopic fidel. And Ethiopic is also a matter we want to touch on. So let's just continue. It's going to take us a while to not a while, but a moment, a moment of reflection. You understand, so we can make maybe even a uh, um, a more applicative a more applicative presentation. You know and this is what we we are we give thanks that we've been able to do this with with the present writing at least in putting into into um a lesson, you know, putting into words. I don't know if some of you understand what I'm I'm trying to struggle with trying to when you see something spiritually and then you're trying to express it in language, not that you can understand it, but so that your hearer can understand it. But here's, here's the main point right here with this particular lesson. Let's just touch on this right here because we've touched on it before briefly. Something known as the Ethiopic War. Something known as the Ethiopic War. I need to get a new pen. The Ethiopic War. The Ethiopic War is very important. The Ethiopic War. Now, the Ethiopic War, it, it involves, I hope you can see this. It involved, it involved seven particular nations, seven nations. Now, in the 46 um, Torah, Torah, it goes in this 46 Torah um, um, study, which um, Ike Ev, Ike Ev, uh, that's uh, chapter 7. It's actually chapter 7 of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 of Deuteronomy. And we thought we might have been... Um, I don't want to say long-winded, but the, the last uh, posting, one of the last postings that we posted was going through um, a teaching or a sibkat, a sermon on Deuteronomy chapter 7. And that's one part of this particular 46 uh, Sabbatical um, reading and feeding or Torah portion or kufl or, or parasha. But if you look at the very first verse 
of chapter 7 of Orit Zedagim, you will find that the, now in the Schofield it has the subscription saying the command to separate or to be separate, come out of her, be separate. So that's also a New Testament, a Hadith, Hadith, Kidan um, idea. You understand? That is, is, is now found in the New Testament. We have a connected link with the Old Testament when he says, when Yahweh thy Elohim shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gergashites, the Amorites, and it says, and the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, or Hevites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So when we look at the Old Testament, because the Old Testament, we're getting the physical types, even, even the template. You know, it's in the physical types, and even that's where the language is introduced. We can say we're going from low degrees to high degrees. So when we're studying Torah, we're learning the basic foundation. You know, it's in the basic order. The, base, the order is the key word. And as we go through the, the sevens and the seven seals and the teaching and the more fuller presentation, which is an application is in it. This is, this is the key thing about it. Because when we're looking at the seven nations, of course, we're looking at it from the biblical and the historical perspective. And as we trace some of the lineage and genealogies of the peoples today, there is sometimes the, the spiritual trap to just get caught up on the physical side, almost like on the letter. But now looking at the spirit of the word, here's where, it becomes very, here's where the rubber meets the road, and there's a wonderful and beautiful and important application in this. So we have the Ethiopic War. I had touched on this in a couple of the other, um, a couple of the other recordings and teachings, and I came across it from my earthly father's his book, The Biblical Antiquities of the Black Race, which is soon to be published by the LOJ Society. As it comes forward, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. But in the manuscript, going through the manuscript and getting the book ready, we saw he had quoted Josephus. Uh, Flavius Josephus, who wrote about the antiquity of the Jews. And Flavius Josephus is a very important historian because it's also in his works that he talks about when some of the Jews and Israelites fled in 70 AD, how they went into Africa, you understand, which is another link to our, we could say, to the physical side of the tree or to the racial, ethnic identity of who we are as a, as a people, as a, as a physical seed. Because it's also, remember, it's not just the spiritual, spiritualizing it, but it's also the physical. Remember that, 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 that through the seed of David was the man Christ born to bring that spiritual teaching. So we're going from the low degrees from the physicality, you understand, to the psychology, to the spirituality. And a note here is his Imperial Majesty's speech on spirituality, where he speaks about how Africa has remained behind because of, of spirituality reasons concerning spirituality. One thing he pointed out was the, the spirituality of the foreigners and the invaders, you understand, but not the, the true spirituality of, of Christ, you understand, from its African Christianity, because in the beginning, of so-called Christianity, Africa was the center. Africa was, it's amazing when you really find out, because you get this idea that Christianity came from Europe or came from white folks, but those who know, know that Africa was that center of, and Ethiopia is the sole, almost the sole survivor of that, of that African or black, you understand, um, root, you understand, that, 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 that God seed, you understand, in still in covenant, you understand, know up until the time of his imperial majesty and the godless coup in 74, 75, and that's a whole different story. But in this particular sabbatical portion, it speaks about these seven nations. So in looking over my father's works, you understand, I, I then went and looked at Josephus, and he had quoted it correctly and everything, but Josephus has some additional information about the Ethiopic War. So I would definitely say look up Flavius, Josephus, look up the Ethiopic War, check out the Google, there's some other sites, and try to just read up on it because it's very interesting. It's a very important war. But here's the interesting thing. 
that we want to connect and, and for some reveal or some to expound on. You understand that the Ethiopic War was actually involving these very same seven nations, these Canaan or Canaanite nations. Now, you have to remember that the, that the Canaanites, and, and if we go through the Ham, Shem, and Japheth bit, the Canaanites and the Egyptians, the native black Egyptians and the Ethiopians all come from the same so-called Kemitic or Hamitic stock of people. You understand? However, we have the Ethiopic War, which actually destroyed, you understand, according to Flavius Josephus, what was a very important ancient war, which helped to reshape you understand, reshape that region of the world. Now, this is very important because the, the, the Ethiopians and the, the Egyptians were of the same stock of people if we take the white man's version of Ham, Shem, and Japheth because they give us that the Ethiopians are Kush and Kush is of, of Kam and Ham and in that racist misinterpretation. You understand of who's who in the Bible, they say, well, black people come from Ham or, or Kam, and, that, and, and the reason why they was cursed is being black and the big lips. And the Jews actually talk about it in their Torah, which is very interesting. I'm going to actually show you the Torah, the footnote of the Torah, and they actually say why Abraham was afraid because the Jews say, the, the German and Polish Jews say, and this is very racist. This is not very loving, you understand, in the covenant, you know. But they say it's because the, the blacks were, were or, or the Egyptians were black and ugly. This is why Abraham, trying to give Abraham an excuse why he, quote, so-called lied about Sarah being his, his, his sister more than his wife and not his wife. But be that as it may, the Ham, Shem, and Japheth is a false paradigm. In other words, they say there was Ham, Shem, and Japheth, one was black, one was so-called olive complexion, and one was white. So I asked the question, well, what was Noah? What was Noah? Was Noah more black, or was Noah like part of him was black, part of him was, was olive skin, and part of him was white? I mean, is, is that the, re the reality of it? So we get to find that all these things are later-day inventions of um, the Europeans, of, of the Europeans in the time of slavery, and also many um, converted Khazar Jews to justify what they were doing to the ethnic Hebrews and to also steal their identity. You understand, the, the first and the major identity theft, you understand, in human history, you understand, was the theft of our identity as the Beit Israel. But let's touch on the Ethiopic War. So the Ethiopic War, because we, we want to sum it up, um, some basic points about it, it involved seven nations, right? It involved seven nations, right? And the nations were of the... Canaan, right? The nations were of the Canaan. There were seven nations of the Canaan. Now here in um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, it actually says the last uh, um, part of the verse, it says, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And as we go through this portion from the 46th Sabbatical, um, the 46 weeks reading, which is now, and then when we look back on, we reflect, review the 45th, it also speaks about the instructions for the conquest of the promised land. But now, here's why this is important. Number seven is important. The Ethiopic War is important because the Ethiopic War puts our brother Moses at the head of an Ethiopian army to destroy these seven nations the very same seven nations that we find here in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now, here is what is very, very interesting. Now, the number seven, we already know that number seven can have um, um, a positive as well as a negative. You see, the bad thing about trying to demonize a number or a color or a shape or something like that is that in the, in the phykesis, you understand, of the, you know, of the universe or the, or the physics, you know what I'm saying, the phi cycle, there is the polarities, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of so-called positive and negative. These are, these are currents, these are energies, like male and female. doesn't mean that always the male being the positive or the plus energy 
you know what I'm saying, the electro part of that electromagnetic and the female being the magnetic doesn't mean that the female is always negative. And we can see this clearly, but we have to understand these, these types of energies. And the same holds true with numbers. You know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about shapes and this whole star, David, controversy. You understand? Because a lot of people are being spooked out unnecessarily. You understand? If they take a little bit of time to headrest with Yah and look at the reality, they can put things into context. You understand? Because if it's not in context, all you have is nonsense. This is why we began off to kind of sermonize a little bit on the Ethiopic War. And to put it into context, Flavius Josephus, he writes about this. It involves seven nations. If you go into some of the ancient writings, some of it is preserved in some of the older forms of the, the Jewish, the, the ancient Jewish teachings called the Talmud. Now, remember, there's an older Talmud. There's the Palestinian Talmud, and there's the Babylonian Talmud. We're not going to go into that. You understand that there are older teachings and older records and archives, like we have our Ethiopic records and archives, and then we also get it from European and other sources that also copied out and kept records. And it's good when the times to study to compare, see who says what, and see how much agrees and what disagrees, so forth and so on. That's what it means by studying and showing yourself approves to God. In other words, we have to know. He says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And he says, you shall believe, and it sets you free. You understand? But you shall know the truth. You believe as the beginning step towards salvation. You understand? As the beginning, in other words, you have faith. You amen. You amen it. That's also another point. But the seven has a positive and a negative. Now, these seven nations in this context is in the negative sense because it's associated with the Canaan, the Canaan, right, or, 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 the, or the, Canaan, the Canaan land and the Canaanites. Now, if you look at the genealogy in, in the Bible, Canaan had um, 11 sons. There were 11 sons, so that means possibly there's 11 nations. But here we find at this time, which is a much later stage, because what Moses gives us in the, in the Torah, you understand, and, and the Pentateuch is the ancient wisdom rightly realigned. Now, I know a lot of people say, no, the Bible was taken from ancient Egypt, and ancient Egypt said it first and said it before. But there were many different denominations in ancient Egypt, just like there's many different denominations of Christian. So if somebody says today, I'm a Christian, and someone asks them, well, what denomination are you? They'll say, well, I'm this kind of Christian. We don't get down with that kind of Christian because of this and that and doctrinal differences. The same thing happened in ancient Egypt. So we have to, we have to understand that. It's like if, when we say it's Rastafari, we are Christian. True Rastafari is Christian. But don't get it twisted. You understand? It doesn't mean that when we see Caesar Borgias or Borgias, we don't recognize that he is the Antichrist, he's the Caliphate, he's the Roman Jesus, he's a latter-day whitewash. But if people who want to believe in that and they do not cross I and I, way, truth, and life, then we can still travel freely. But they want to impose it on us and violate our God-given free right and, and human right. Well, that's a whole different story. But the, the seven nations here, I want you to put the seven nations down. Here's how we spiritualize it, you understand, properly. Because when we look at the Old Testament, we're getting the types. You know, when we look at the Old Testament, it's the types, it's the similes, it's the parables, it's the figures of things that now in Christ now, you understand, they now go to the spiritual level. You understand, they go to the spiritual level. What we mean by that is as a Christian, as a true Christian or not, a rabbi, a true follower of Jesus Christ, the teaching of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach, or Jesus Christ, you understand? Um, without the whitewash, that being accepted, but we're speaking about the word, somebody in their head and their heart and in their deed truly seeks to, to live a life of Christ. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Christ is that example for them. His Imperial Majesty's speech on, on the Lutheran interview, I think, is a perfect foundation for I and I's Rastafari, you know, saying, to get our spiritual house in order. But now, the seven nations that Moses now reminds them in Deuteronomy that they are to go in, you understand, and cast out many nations before them, and it points out these seven nations. These seven nations. Now, coupled with the seven nations, let's put this right here, coupled with the seven nations, we have 
seven seals, right? Right? In Revelation. But then in Revelation, not only the seven seals, we have the seven trumpets, the seven vows, the judgment. Sevens are used a whole lot in Revelation for the positive side, you understand, of the tree, you understand, of life, as well as the negative side of the tree of life. Now, we also have, right, and put this under Canaan right here, we have the seven heads, right? We have the seven heads of this of this abomination, of, 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 of this, of this, some say the dragon. The dragon has the seven heads of the dragon. There are seven heads on this dragon. Now, do you see, this? is, is, is there any connection? This is New Testament. You understand? This is Old Testament. Now there are seven seals. Remember, the line of the tribe of Judah came to do what? What did the line of the tribe of Judah come to do according to Revelation 5.5? 5? And it's very important for us to study this because you can read it, but you're going to interpret it initially from what you know around you. You have to remember this is ancient. This is ancient. So there was an ancient perspective that has been lost, unfortunately, in today's day and time, in today's world. You understand? Um, it says that weep not. It says weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to do what? To open the book, open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now it speaks about seven horns. It speaks about seven spirits, the seven spirits of God, right? But now there's these seven heads on the dragon, and there's seven nations of the Canaan who are to be driven out of the promised land. Now, when we come into the kingdom of God, you understand, and into, into the, the kingdom of God, we're not talking about pie in the sky. We're talking about when there's a consciousness, there's a metanoia, there's a consciousness shift, you understand, from there's a rewiring, you understand, in your way of thinking. In other words, you now conforming your way of thinking to the teaching of the Messiah, the teaching of Yeshua, the teaching of Jesus Christos, and your way of thinking and your way of doing. But it must first begin, you must first be born again from above in the head and the heart. You understand? But now these seven nations here who are occupying the promised land, remember Ethiopic war, you understand? But there's a spiritual war. Now remember the true etymology of Ethiopia is from Tobia. And Tob in Hebrew means good. So if we now interpret the spirit of the Ethiopic war will be the good war, it will be like the Bible says to fight the good fight. But we need to understand what is this good fight. So many of us, we're looking at the physical, but we're getting lost in the temporal and don't even recognize that the real warfare is going on in spirit. You understand? It's, it's, it's the thoughts. It's the feelings. It's these things we don't see, but that which moves the physical things. When somebody gets angry and do something, it is a spirit. You understand? It is a spirit. You know, and that's what we must overcome. You understand? We must overcome the 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 what is it? The Jezehora. The Jezehora. From a Judaic perspective, ones might understand that's the inclination to do evil. And these seven nations here and the seals. You know what I'm saying? The seals, when they're not loose, you know what I'm saying? The seals have been bound. You know what I'm saying? Have been wound the wrong way. And this now deals with the seven chakras. Now, we touched on the I'll follow the prayer. You know what I'm saying? Or the Buna Zebesamayat or um, the, the um, Besamaya Mitanor or Bata Chinhoi, the Our Father who lives in heaven, and how there are seven verses. And these seven verses correspond to the seven seals in man, which really is also the tree of life. Now, one of the, 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 the blessings or the rewards or the gifts in Christ is that the overcomers, those who can overcome materiality, you know, saying the material, the materialism, and this is all part of Canaan. This is why I want to touch on this right here. And as we said, we want to take a little more time to um, work out a presentation, but we didn't want to just hold on this 
You understand? When it was revealed, why were we talking about the Ethiopic? It was meditating. The Ethiopic War. The Ethiopic War. The seven nations. You understand? The seven nations. The Ethiopic War. You understand? We know that Moses was a general in Ethiopia. You understand? This is how one particular ancient legend says that he came to marry his wife, or some say one of his wives. Wives. One say that he had two wives. You understand? Others say no, the Medeani and the Ethiopian was the same woman. That's a whole other controversy. This is more important because this has an applicative. This has an applicative of now, now. There's an application that goes with it, not just to learn dry, dusty, you understand, um, ancient things and say, well, how does that affect us, you understand, in this present day and time? Now, we're going to go through this. This is the... Uh, Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. I think we have this at our website as, as a PDF, or there's a version as a PDF. If we haven't uploaded it, we'll try to upload it because it, it's, a, it's a good reference, you understand, when we are looking at it metaphysically, you understand, when we're looking at it from a true mystical or spiritual approach, you understand, to the studies. You understand, not looking at it as many Christians do from ideas but becoming ideology it becomes like yes that's christ over there pie in the sky after i die but they're not working out their salvation the bible says we must work out our salvation you know so it's not enough to say well i go to church regularly i praise god so on. but how are we living you know and how we're we living his way and have we learned the order of his way from the word that's why christ says you do err not knowing the what the scriptures nor the power of God, nor the power. Remember the disciples in the New Testament, chapter 1, chapter 2, when Christ says to them, stay in the upper room, watch and pray, you know, until the Holy Spirit come upon you. And then when the Holy Spirit, when you're guided by the Spirit, it's like in the Star Wars movie when he say, use the force, Luke, use the force, Luke. It's not so much the force in that sense, but use the Spirit. In other words, be guided by the Holy Spirit. Get to seek, pray for the Holy Spirit. This is so very important. His Majesty said that spiritual power is the ultimate power in this world and in the next. And he taught, you know what I'm saying, and bore witness that Christ and the Bible are the keys, you know what I'm saying, for we. You know what I'm saying, are the keys for all who will hear. You know what I'm saying, we're to preach and proclaim, you know what I'm saying, and one to have a right to hear or to forbear. But under Canaan, so you can understand how these seven nations, which are to be driven out, the, the, the Kana'an links with these seven seals, you know what I'm saying? But it also, by contrast, links with the seven heads on the dragon. Because the seven heads on the dragon, this right here, we could take a little marker. This right here can, can be said to equal that right there. Now, what's really interesting is that if you know anything about astral theology, right, that um, the lion constellation in, in, in Africa that's seen from like Egypt and Ethiopia. If you go to the other side of the world, it's a dragon. It, it's, it's kind of interesting that the same lion in one hand is, can be inter is interpreted in another culture as a dragon. You understand? So it's almost like the flip, the flip side. You understand? Do you worship God in spirit and truth or do you worship mammon? You understand? You're getting the flip side. The, the truth is we're supposed to Worship God, even with our mammon, even with our wealth. You understand? Not to worship the wealth aside as though it is, it is some sort of a God, it is some sort of intelligence, it is some sort of love, and, and it's, it's nothing. It's a tool. It, 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 God made man, man made mammon, you understand? And fallen man worships mammon because his seven seals have not been loose. He has not gone to the book. You understand? Know he has not studied. He has not learned. You understand? Know He's walking around in blindness. So these seven seals are bound up. You understand? Know and he becomes part and parcel, you understand, know saying, for this seven heads dragon and this beast and all the Bab mystery Babylon and all of the, the negative types that in the real world, have their counterparts, whether we want to talk about the Illuminati, the New World Order, white supremacy, so forth and so on, the Pope, Vatican, and all of that. They have their worldly counterparts, but they're not to be defeated on the temporal level, 
You see what I'm saying? Because they only came in to rulership over Adam, over man. You know what I'm saying? Because of Adam's spiritual, conscious, you understand, obedience fall. His fall from obedience, you understand, to rebellion. You understand? And therefore, he gave up his rulership. You understand? So the fallen angels, you understand, these fallen principalities and powers took over, and then as the spiritual law goes, like attract like, whenever beings were, were in a low spiritual vibration, you understand, these evil spirits, you understand, these fallen angels, as, as ones might know it, you understand, and then after that the demons and the discarnates, so forth and so on, they were able to use man who was vibrating on the same low frequency level, you know what I'm saying, as like attracts like. So you'll find that as, as one spiritual um, head and heart, thoughts of their head and heart and their deeds become more refined spiritually in the way of the King of Kings and his Christ, you will also be magnetized or uh, attract a different environment of people. You'll find that once you become born again, certain folks that you used to roll with, certain things you used to do, you just don't feel it. And even people say, what's wrong with you? Like, you're strange, you're different. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't feel that like attracting like. You understand? There's been a rewiring, something, something new in that sense, but really something true is going on. Yovis. So, the seven seals, the seven nations, the seven heads of the dragon, we could go on, but we want to make this main link right here because the key now is the book and the seals. Now, we have to understand Kana'an, and here's where we want to, want to, want to, want to wrap up on this part of it, because the, 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 the Kana'an and the seven nations were those who were defeated in the Ethiopic War. You understand? And even the Israelites are told under Joshua, under Shu, to defeat them as well. So here in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, and here's what's so interesting, I knew that Kana'an is interpreted as meaning low lander, low lander. You understand? Yet, I also knew that in later, um, like in um, the prophets, it says no longer will the, the, the Canaanite, you know what I'm saying, be in the house of the Lord. Now, it's interpreted in some Bibles as the merchant. Now, here, for Kana'an, it says, realize, from the Hebrew, realize nothingness. Kana'an is the realization of nothingness. The realization of nothingness. It's material existence. It's traffic. Traffic in materiality. It means a merchant. It refers to merchant. A pirate. So here's the link of old pirates. Yes, say rabbi. You understand? This is the link with the pirate. It means low. It means inferior. Not so-called racially or genetically, although that came into effect. You understand with the leprosy among the Canaanites of the physical people because the, the Indo-Europeans come out of genetically, physically out of that Canaanitish people. You understand? Ask yourself, what's the link between the so-called Indians in India, you understand, and the so-called Europeans and the languages that they call them Indo-European? Like, ask yourself, what's the link between the Asiatic, the Afro-Asiatic languages called the Hamo-Semitic languages and Hebrew? is included in the Afro-Asiatic languages. So even they tell you right there that the root is Africa. You understand? So we have to know who we are, you understand, from the physical. Remember, it's from physical. It was the first level. You understand? Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Then we have the, the, the psychical or the soul level. And then we have the spiritual level. Remember, man was made in the image and after the likeness of the true God. And therefore, the true God is the triune God, yet he is the one God. Now, I know some people say that don't make no sense because some people are senseless. Some people refuse to accept it because they already are worshiping another God. You know what I'm saying? But to prove that we was made in the image and the likeness of Elohim, which literally can be translated as gods, you understand? But we was made in his image and likeness because we are also tripartite. You understand? There, there are three aspects that dwell in all of us. We have spirit, we have soul, and we have body. And all of these dwell together. Psychology and, and science, the European science has taken a long time 
But slowly they're beginning to reflect after a bunch of research. They're basically saying, the, you know, that all oh, this is true after we researched it. How much time has been wasted out of disobedience? But that is the nature, you understand, because those on the low land can't see the higher heights. You understand? So when you're caught on the low land and in the inferior land, you're in the land of material existence, of, of traffic, of realizing nothingness. This is what the whole debt crisis and where, where this end time, this unrepentant Gentile and Jezebel, you know what I'm saying, is coming to. It's coming to this realization, you know what I'm saying, realization of nothingness. Now, when it's defined, Canaan or Canaan is the land that was given to the Israelites, the Beta Israel by God, by El Elohe Israel, by the God of Israel for and everlasting, for an everlasting possession, right? And do, uh, Genesis 17 and 8, Deuteronomy 32, 49, Joshua 14, verses 1 to 5. Secondly, it's a son, Canaan, Canaan was a son of Ham or Kam, linked to the Kemet, um, one of Noch or Noah's three sons, one of the three sons of Noch or one of the three sons of the Ankh of the one who was living, you understand, the one who was the living, you understand, those who, who, who lived in the boat through the waters. You can see Egypt is, of course Egypt is written all, in all of that, but not the way a lot of you all have been looking at it, because what you're doing is looking at it in a fragmented way. You're not seeing it holistically, you understand, and, that, and largely because Many of you have not taken it seriously, this, this new birth, this regeneration, the king of kings and his Christ. And, th and perhaps we have not preached or proclaimed it effectively. And perhaps there's not enough of us who are preaching and proclaiming it as though we had faith in it or as though we recognize that it's true. You understand? Some Rastafari are in some way, as though they know his majesty speak about a yes was crystal, it's just as Christ, like they're ashamed. To mention, they would say, well, well, they're one. Well, yes, they are one, but the Father and the Son are two distinct manifestations, you understand, know from the Word, you understand, know that is fulfilled in Hyla Selassie the First and in Jesus Christos 2,000 years ago. This is, this is the beautiful thing about it. Though ones and ones have not seen this because racism and a lot of bias and other things you know what I'm saying? The hypocrisy has sealed up those seals because the seals cannot open, you understand, until you open them. You understand? Know and there's a preparation that's necessary. Now, metaphysically, Canaan means lowland. Canaan means lowland. Now we're looking at Canaan not from its physical type, which actually leads to white supremacy that way. You know understand? But we're looking at it from its spiritual type, you understand, know which lead to this 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 technologically advanced but morally de decadent and deficient and evil you understand world that we're living in you understand though materiality is all around and there's technological advancement and there's enough food and everything for everybody there's still greed there is still there's still this these seals are bound up the seven nations the, the dragons the demons the seven seals are still bound up you understand? They still are in the yoke. They have not been born again because the birth again process is now what opens these seals and overcomes the seven nations are in us. Each of us has the spiritual type of these seven nations. Now, hear what Canaan is or Canaan is. Canaan means lowland. That is the body consciousness. So they're telling you right here, the body consciousness. This book was written back in the 20s and 30s. So a lot of this was known, not just back then, but, but it's true, it's true, it's true. So Canaan now, when viewed spiritually, when now we're looking at our, the Torah teaching, and not just looking at well, just Africa, the physical land, because first we must overcome this land. You know what I'm saying? We, must overcome, we go from the, 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 the lesser battle, looking at other people, in that sense, to the greater battle, to self-recognition, you know what I'm saying, of when we are not, living in conformity to that which we say we mentally assent to and that which we say in heart we also agree with, then how come we do not do it? How come we don't live that way? 
You see, that's what that, that, that now brings on watching and praying, you understand, and asking the Father for strength in the authority of Jesus Christos. Remember, no man can go to the Father. Even if you know the Father as Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Taichin, you cannot go to the Father spiritually and not acknowledge, especially if you've been told, and, and you've been told the truth without acknowledging the Son. You know what I'm saying? Without acknowledging Jesus Christo. So we have to understand the, 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 the order. You know what I'm saying? The order of the kingdom. Because it's first seek ye the kingdom of God. First seek the kingdom. So on the spiritual level, going into the Kana'an, you know what I'm saying? And vanquishing these seven nations, you know what I'm saying? It's seeking the kingdom of God. Recognizing the, the open book, you know what I'm saying? And the loose seals is seeking the kingdom of God and being the overcomers over the dragon, over the beast, over the false prophet, and mainly over the wickedness and the evilness, not just physically, but spiritually. You know what I'm saying? But spiritually. That, that is the key. And psychologically. And then physically. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, the redeemed body, the redeemed body is the promised land. The redeemed body so even Rastafari, know, you know, uh, old-time Rastafari spoke about how the body is a temple, the temple of the living God. Yet the, the full teaching ha ha wasn't always taught, although some did endeavor and did teach much on the truth of, that basically reflects the same as the teaching. You understand? Many have not heard. Many do not know. You understand? So the redeemed body is the promised land. And when man rediscovers this lost domain, people are so caught up on domain names of, of websites and other things out there, but the real domain or, 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 or house, you know, or something like that, physical house, and they are forgetting their, their spiritual house. You understand? They are neglecting what is really important both in this world and the world to come because no man knoweth the day nor hour. So that's why we have to be always prepared. You understand? So the redeemed body is the promised land, and when man rediscovers this lost domain, all the promises, what we talked about before, is the assets, you understand, all the blessings of the metahif, of the scriptures, will be fulfilled. It is not a hilum. It is not a dream. It is not a dream that man is to possess an immortal body, that man is to possess and, and go from mortality to immortality or the glorification of the body as in a twinkling of an eye. This is not, you know, so when Rastafari say, you know what I'm saying, from a point of faith that I and I not die, you know what I'm saying, we are declaring the promises for the redeemed, you understand? Know now we have to work out our salvation because the Bible teaches that. We're saved by grace. Grace is what gives us the opportunity now, you understand, know to recognize that grace, you understand, and how lost we were and to use our time, you understand, in order to redeem the time, recognizing how evil the days are. So it is a solid fact. In order to redeem the body, man must enter with his spiritual thoughts, with his spiritual thoughts, his spiritual thinking into his organism. He must go within. This now links to the Mawahai, the Tawahido, the true, the true Aritit Hymenot, or the Hymenot, the Hymenote Aritit, or Ritua. You understand? The true, the true right teachings. You understand? The true. They would say orthodox, but orthodox is a foreign Greek word and does not match rit it in its Ethiopic meaning. Remember, it was the Ethiopic war, you understand, that was able to overcome and cast out these seven nations. You understand? So this is an Old Testament type that actually foreshadows, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. So moving on, it says that, in order to redeem the body, man must enter, and we say man, we're saying generically, the male and the female, sister and brother and mother, must enter with his spiritual thoughts, his spiritual thoughts, not his, his, his man-made thoughts that he tries to spiritualize, you understand? But the spiritual thoughts are the thoughts that pertain to the teaching, you understand, of his majesty that pertain to the testimony 
of the Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, or Jesus Christos, or Jesus Christ, if you please. Now, he must enter into his organism and teach it. We must enter into our organism and teach it the saving truth. Not just the truth, because there's a lot of truth, but this truth which is the saving or the salvic truth, the truth which tends towards salvation. We also think of Canaan, lowland, as referring to the subconscious. So the level that metaphysicians recognize when they say Canaan, well, this is almost like a code word, that this code word, Canaan, refers to the subconsciousness. Metaphysically, it represents humbleness and receptivity. So metaphysically, it represents humbleness and receptivity, or tehitna, and receptiveness, or mekebel, mekebel to say like the Kabbalah, right? The land of Canaan, too, represents the unlimited elemental forces of being, the unlimited elemental forces of being in which man is placed and to which he gives character through faith in God as omnipresent spirit. It's the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. I know some think that the spirit is an a, a illusion. Material man who's not, whose eyes are not open, therefore his spiritual eyes are not open, he can't see the spirit. So to him it seems like an illusion because all he can see is the physical reality, the physical world. The teaching of the King of Kings advocates spiritual power in Christ, study of the scripture and application in our living way. You know what I'm saying? This is how we go through that transformation from low degrees to high degrees. And this is all being the seven seals. This is also going to deal with the seven chakras. This is going to link with the seven, or what's called the seven sifras or the seven wheels. Now, just to conclude this part right here, it says, to mystics, and we know as Matthew speaks of the mystics, to mystics, it is the name of the invisible substance. To mystics, it's the name of the invisible substance that surrounds and interpenetrates all forms of which it is the mother, or we can even say the old mother type. You know what I'm Remember, Yahweh says, I will destroy your mother. And in Revelation, we see two mothers. You understand? Know we see New Jerusalem, the true church, right, of the King of Kings and Christ. And we see Mystery Babylon, also a church, and also specifically called a mother as well. So th there's, there's a further link right here going on. Now, Canaan, as the son of Ham, refers to the fleshy organism and the tendencies of man. And now through Canaan, from the physical, fleshy, organic side, you understand, links with the Europeans, links with white people or, or, or Indo-European people. And this is very well proven, not only us, but there's even a lot of white people who know themselves, and they even advocate it. But some white people don't want to, you know, they have other kind of delusive ideas, but some really recognize that the Canaanites are white or European, or, or they're the progenitors of the Indo, the Indo, um, the Indo-European and so-called Aryan peoples. Now, it refers to the physical, the physical and not the spiritual, the physical and not the spiritual. So when we say Kana'an, Kana'an is, in a sense, the world that has been pulled over our eyes, the material world. It's almost like part of the matrix, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? And now when we enter into that, it's like almost like entering into the matrix, you know what I'm saying, and overcoming it. But there are seven. There are seven nations. There are seven seals. There are seven heads of the dragon. Now, what's interesting is that when it said up here that um, in order to redeem the body, man must enter with his spiritual thoughts into his organism and teach the saving truth. There's a note here. I don't know if I had read it earlier. It says, this is the symbolic teaching the symbolic teaching of Joshua 1, of Joshua 1. So Joshua chapter 1, you know what I'm saying, 
is a symbolic teaching of this particular truth that man must, must, in order to redeem the body, he must enter with his spiritual thoughts into his organism. So we have to actually learn, study to show ourselves approval, and actually reteach ourselves and conform ourselves and go through this, this discipline, this day-to-day discipline, you understand, individually, you understand, as well as collectively. But we cannot look for the collective before we start the work on the individual, almost like what Mike, the late Michael Jackson said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. So we really have to start. We could say the other guy is that such and such and such, but how much are we conforming, you understand, willingly, you understand, or how much are we self-realizing, you understand, self-recognition, self-realizing, you understand, and going, you understand, to our Heavenly Father in the authority of Christ in prayer and asking him for that spiritual strength. That's the question. You understand that we have to ask ourselves. So the true walk, and what's interesting is that now we're coming to Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy would would actually of of this semester, so to speak, of this of this cycle of Torah scroll reading from Genesis at the beginning to Deuteronomy. You understand we're coming like to the end of a semester, end of the, the end of that term, the end of that study, and the book that comes after that is Joshua. You understand? The book that comes after that. So when we learn the basic lesson, we have to walk into it. As the Israelian also went into the promised land. But if you recall, there was a little challenge because they reached the River Jordan. I'm sure you all heard this in songs before. They reached the River Jordan, and what did they do? They turned back. That's what it says, don't reach the River Jordan and turn back. You understand? What had to be laid down was those 12 stones. Remember when Joshua got the word to lay down those 12 stones so the people could cross over that way? Because when they got to the River Jordan, Wardanos, they lost heart. So when we get to that point of the spiritual point of crossing over, and that crossing over is when we become, in spirit and in truth, Hebrews. Spiritually, we become Hebrews. You understand? Even righteous Gentiles experience that Hebraicism, you understand, that crossing over. That's what Hebrew means, to cross over from the materialism, you understand, to the true spirituality of the King of Kings and his Christ. So this area of Scripture with the Ethiopic War, the seven nations, the link with the seven seals, Canaan, it all connects together. And... We wanted to share this. That's why we just presented, we're presenting this teaching as is. It didn't really take a lot of time for presentation, but it's following up on what we've already been teaching through this particular semester, this particular course of sabbatical studies, and we have to recognize the, 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 the spiritual. You know what I'm saying? We have to elevate to the spiritual, you understand, because... It should be obvious, you understand, I mean, from all that we know, it should be obvious. There's many things I could say, you understand, to link to that from the scripture. But suffice it to say right now, this was just a little brief update. And once again, this is Arasi Adinos Teferi, um, Wendem Yadin, reporting this particular matter about the Ethiopic war or the good war, the spiritual war.